tonight on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Fair. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just describing them. I've been thinking a lot about those fried Oreos and how I would do them. I don't know the directions. <laughs> I get confused playing Twister. Beautiful. Yeah, really well, well done. Well done. Yeah. No notes. Mm-hmm. Except... IFAF. Idaho Falls Local. Independent. Alternative. Media. With Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Very dulcet, very demure. Ooh, very mindful. Tones on that piano, right? Mm -hmm. Hit that like button and subscribe on YouTube. We sure could use your help. Let the algorithm in the cloud know that you're into Idaho Falls infotainment, opinion, and bad jokes. On tonight's episode, a follow-up including ice cream and olive oil. Also, Ross Dress for Less is in shambles and falling <laughs> apart. Almost as bad as Idaho Falls High School. Ooh. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> uh, what was the song of the summer? Spud Days, and what in tarnation's going on in the McDonald's parking lot on Hit? First things first, did you see our bonus mini-sode that came out Friday? Because if you're planning on going to the Eastern Idaho State Fair and wondering what food to eat, we tried 33 different fair foods. And it was fantastic. And I feel like that mini-sode is like the perfect food roadmap. Yes, I think so too. Yeah, I know what I'm buying in bulk. Hmm. I'm probably going to buy like two of those uh, pickle pizzas so that I can freeze them and yes. eat them periodically when I'm craving them because I don't know if I can go without having some. They're amazing. They're so good. <laughs> and I forget who does them. Oh, Mama uh, and Papa Leo's. Uh-huh, yep. Yes. Yeah, which I, mean, I love the name because my cat. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's got a cat, Leo. I do, he's sweet. I wonder if we could make our own. I mean, it probably wouldn't be as good. We could I might do like, be able to. You know how my complaint about <laughs> that pizza was, I wish the crust was crispier. It's, oh, it's a real nice, thin. I loved the crust. Soft, I thought the chewy crust dough. Was perfect. But I like it crispy. Right, right. I get that. I guess the recipe is, you know, crust, Alfredo mm -hmm. sauce, mm -hmm. mozzarella and cheddar, and cheddar uh -huh. blend, mm -hmm. pickles, and, and dill, dill on it. Oh. Just fantastic. You know, I do. I was kind of thinking, and I was trying to figure out what meat they could put on it without overpowering the thing. Mm -hmm. I would say Hot either. Dogs. Ew, no. <laughs> hamburger, ground hamburger. Uh, I was actually going to say maybe a nice uh, spicy sausage might complement it well. Okay. Either that or else bacon goes with everything um, or even chicken. I think chicken would be good. Uh, mm -hmm. You know how people sometimes put ranch on their pizza? Right. Have you ever had pickles and ranch? I mean, delicious, right? Like we do. In Idaho and mm -hmm. Utah. Right, Probably right. stole the idea from Utah. We had to have. <laughs> it's a Mormon corridor thing. <laughs> right, yeah. You wouldn't understand. But it's kind of like that soup that we talked about, too. Yeah. You know, that pickle and ranch soup. Can you imagine having that pickle and ranch soup with that pizza with a side of ranch? Oh, Be pickle-tastic. <laughs> I want to mention something, too. I think it's brilliant to put pickles on a pizza mm -hmm. at the fair because it has the two things that help hydrate you along with water, right? Uh -huh. which is carbs and electrolytes. Right. Mm -hmm. There, There's electrolytes in that pickle brine. Uh-huh. And it, in fact, let's take a quick sidebar because I had a friend who was um, having muscle cramps and little mm -hmm. muscle spasms, traveling muscle spasms. Ooh, bummer. Sometimes, you know, for a few days, he'd have it like in his shoulder. Oh, and uh -huh. then it'd be in his leg. Oh. And I just want to mention something. This might be a very Amazon-tastic episode <laughs> as we go on, and you'll see why. Fair enough. But I want to mention one of my favorite purchases of the summer. This is the second bottle I've purchased, and it's almost gone now. It's Salt Stick Electrolyte Fast Chews. Yeah, and they're actually pretty tasty, too. They are. They come in a ton of flavors. Now, mm -hmm. a bottle this big, is it 60 count? And I think the dose is 30. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they come in like lemon lime, which is what I got because mm -hmm. Gatorade, I don't know. Right. But, uh, the third bottle I've got in my Amazon cart has, it's like pineapple, coconut, pina colada. Ooh, nice. Right. But they have a few other flavors, but they, uh, if you feel yourself getting dehydrated, I think sometimes the first place you feel it is in your eyes and on the tip of your tongue. Oh, I could see that. I think those are the last places to get fully hydrated. Right. Uh, and if you're having muscle cramps, muscle spasms, those things help. Mm -hmm. Like he was having a foot cramp the other day, chewed on a couple of these for 10 minutes, and it went away. Nice. Okay, that's good to know. There's a little hydration tip for you for the Eastern Idaho State Fair, because mm -hmm. 
we we said a couple of weeks ago we don't know if fair weather is going to be freezing cold or <laughs> right. hot 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 yeah and yeah it's going to be sizzling hot oh wow okay for the next 10 days it looks like highs in the 80s and 90s oh geez louise <laughs> i was kind of hoping it'd stay where it's been we did have a nice cool off for like a week yeah which was super great some rain and mm-hmm. some just colder temperature i think it got down to like 48 oh yeah i kept my window open for a night week. it was amazing yeah i bet yeah you love that you'd love I to do. be you'd love your room to be like Less than 69 degrees. Oh, like yeah, we like the 65. Yeah. yeah. Especially if I have my heated blanket on my bed. Oh, mm-hmm. See, that is, that's my perfect sleeping conditions. You know, I like the room to be freezing cold, but my bed to be nice and cozy. So should we show all 33 foods that we tried in quick succession here? Oh, that's up to you. <laughs> if you want to pay the editor to. <laughs> okay, here we go. In the best new sweet category, cheese curds with caramel sauce from Twisted Tater, Peachy Keen from Camille's Crepes, The Devil's Delight, Sweet Temptation, Strawberry Butter Cake, Creamy Creations. In the best new entree category, Surf and Turf from Between the Buns, Lime Crazy Stick from Mexican Crazy Corn, Gourmet Stuff, Nacho Bites from La Casita Mexican Food, Crabby Patty Melt from Chop and Crab Shack, Sweet Hawaiian Pork from Big Guy's Hawaiian Barbecue, Black Hawk Beast from Black Hawk Barbecue Pit, Chicken Cordon Bleu from Camille's Crepes. <sighs> Flamin' Flautas from La Casita Mexican Food. Pickle Pizza from Mama and Papa Leo's, like we were just talking about. Cajun Cheesy Fries from BJ's Bayou. In the fairest sweet category, Raspberry Cream Cheese Brownie from Creamy Creations. Caramel Apple Chips from Fazakerly's Fudge and Candy. Deep Fried Oreo, Yankee Can Cook, Peach and Dream Churro Donuts. CR Fish and Things, The Peach Temptation from Sweet Temptations. Better at the Fair Cake from Creamy Creations. Deep Fried Cheesecake, Yankee Can Cook. And in the fairest entree category, Garlic Truffle Tortatoes from Tortatoes. Warhawk from Blackhawk Barbecue. Sample Platter from CR our fish and things whole damn farm from smoking bees deep fried cheese curds from between the buns philly cheesesteak sandwich yankee can't cook cowboy burger from billman's country fried bacon burger from twisted tater chicken house panini from between the buns smoked salmon on a bagel from cr fish and things hog on a log from black hawk barbecue pit and the turkey bacon avocado crepe from camille's crepes yum so much goodness they're all good the hog on the log was the big fairest of the fair mm-hmm. main yeah. entree item that you would i think i mean if you've got a family of four, each one gets a piece. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's so well seasoned. I love their barbecue sauce. Big old hunks of pork mm-hmm. on a stick. Yeah, can't go wrong. <laughs> Funatthefair.com for all the details. It runs through this Sunday, September 8th. Comments and follow-ups from Dane saying, I read the Arby's sign as, from last episode, the sign wars between Arby's and Fiesta Ole on mm-hmm. 17th. I read the sign, the Arby sign as rather have meat sweats than a burr ito, as in it's better to be warm oh. than to be cold. Because there was a space in between burr oh, and ito. Okay, that actually does make a lot more sense. That's a that's a lot more of a thinker than yeah. I thought it was, Dane. Thanks for <laughs> right. pointing that out. Yeah. Austin from TikTok says to in response to our um swoob hack. Oh yeah. With the panty liners. Uh-huh. Uh, He says, I put them in my hat brim while fishing or golfing. Oh, smart. Cheap and useful. So useful. All right, buddy. Yeah. I was like, can dudes use that trick too for their swack, but there's even for their sweat. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) For their sweat. I think think they just call that sweat at that point. (laughs) Yeah. Forehead sweat. I mean, I guess there's those. Um, yeah, what am they, I doing? The like headbands. Uh huh. Yeah. The, the mm-hmm. tennis players wear, right? Yeah. Do yeah. Those are those? really popular. The sweatbands. Yeah. Yeah. I also wanted to mention, we paid tribute to Don Aslett, rest in peace, cleaning legend from Pocatello. Uh, he's got the Museum of Clean there in Pocatello. I wanted to make sure you knew he also has, you, you can pay tribute to him as well. If you're doing a little getting ready for the holidays cleaning, mm-hmm. did I really say that? It is September. Yeah. 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 It's time. It's not quite Q4, but close. I mean, you can at least get ready for Halloween. That's right. <laughs> um, but there's a Don Aslett Cleaning Center in Idaho Falls. Mm-hmm. And yeah. of course, in Pocatello, Twin Falls, and Logan. Yeah, ours is right by the Dairy Queen. Mm-hmm. On 17th. It's kind of it's kind of back there a little bit, right? Right. Yeah. right. Hall Park Plaza, I mm-hmm. believe it's called. Yeah. Yeah, one okay. of those. Also, remember when we were talking a couple episodes back about how, isn't it funny that every family has a big bowl? Right. That they break out for family movie night mm-hmm. for popcorn. And then it's also the same one mom hands you when it's time to, you know, puke. Yeah, if you've got the flu. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I saw this meme. It adds to it. Every family has this vintage Tupperware foot bath 
slash meat defroster slash puke bucket slash potato salad and popcorn bowl. <laughs> I mean, it's true, though, honestly. But Versatile. does that does that mean that all the summer barbecues I went to this year, that big old bowl they were serving the potato salad in has also had somebody's feet and somebody's <laughs> puke in it? I mean, at least someone's puke, probably. Yeah. 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 See, yet hmm. another reason why the <laughs> pitcher makes so much more sense. Yes. You know? Carly's brilliant idea about the puke pitcher. Mm-hmm. In- instead of using the bowl, you use what you would take uh, your lemonade to for a family barbecue. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't feel as gross Because it's got a handle. Yeah. And you can get right up in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. And an easy pour spout. Uh, and for our last follow-up, it's we don't do treat time every episode, but it seems like we have been. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Dane, back to you. He suggested earlier we needed to try ice cream mm-hmm. with olive oil. Yeah, I'm excited to try this. So let's do it. Here we have our ramekin. And let's let's put up a shot of everything we're going to try here. First of all, mm-hmm. this is haagen vanilla okay. bean ice cream. I thought we'd do a nice basic flavor. Right, right. And so, vanilla bean is a great t- vanilla. And then, of course, we're going to, um, this is my one-handed salt shaker that I use in the kitchen. It's battery powered. It's got a little button on the top. Yeah, that thing rocks. Also an Amazon find. Yep. Do I'll yeah. let you do your own salt. <laughs> now, this uh, is... Uh, now, something you can't see on camera is that Rango is also here because he's oh, yeah. convinced that anytime we have a snack, he has a snack. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that, buddy. Aw. Now, to compliment this, so without even, with, with no prompting... Mm-hmm. Kevin, the most interesting man in the world, sent us some of this olive oil. It's Spatico extra virgin olive oil from Greece. Oh wow, that's pretty. That's pretty fancy. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Very nice what a of him. Generous, thoughtful gift. And here, right. let's crack it open for the first time. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh yeah, that that just opened <laughs> bottle of olive oil sound. Right. Uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> glug, well, glug, glug. I went to town. I don't know yeah. if you can see that, but. <laughs> Yours is nice and lubed. I really lubed it up. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of wondering what the benefit of the olive oil is, because I can't imagine it's necessarily flavor. He says it's really good olive oil. Well, no, I get that this one is really good olive oil, but on ice cream. Oh, what the point like, is. Does it just help to extra this whole lube exercise. It? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. Do you want the lid? Uh, or, I, no, well, I, yeah, we'll do we'll, it later. Yeah. Okay. So. I also want to mention that you maybe saw the fancy salt in there. It's fleur de sel, <laughs> which I think means flower of salt or something in mm. French. It is, my friend got, you know those world boxes? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. A buddy of mine got one of those from France oh, one month. That's cool. He did like boxes of the world. And it was the best salt I've ever had. Now, oh, wow. okay. I don't use a lot of table salt. Mm-hmm. So I buy the good stuff. I hear right. you can vastly improve your cooking with two things. Mm-hmm. Good salt and good pepper. Yeah. So I use fleur de sel and that um, Indian tela cherry pepper. Oh, that's I'm nice. not hoity-toity. It takes me like <laughs> a year to go through that little uh-huh. round, not box. Canister. Canister that mm-hmm. you saw. And then after we do this, we're going to try the Mia Bella. This is the eight ounce bottle of balsamic <laughs> vinegar for 45 bucks or whatever it is. Right, on, that, that expensive one. That taught Mikey to always check the size of the thing <laughs> I'm buying. <laughs> yep. But it's so good. So good. It's so worth it. You know, I think it's funny that you go for that fancy French salt because I go for pink Himalayan salt. Yeah. Yeah. That's also So are we going to do just the olive oil first and then do the balsamic after? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. That sounds good to me. You want to do it? Yeah, I'm down. Here we go. Eating vanilla ice cream with olive oil and salt. We did talk Mm. about how great it is to live in a world where... We've discovered how salt can add to the flavor of even sweet stuff. Right. And I saw a little, was that a grimace? Would you say it was a grimace? It might have been a little grimace. I don't know if I like the olive oil on it. It, <laughs> it sure does taste, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it has a taste. I'm trying to decide if it's a good taste. I need, I need another data point. Tastes too much like olives in the back of my mouth. I don't hate it, Mm. but I don't know if I would actively choose to put olive oil on my ice cream. Oh, I just got a little flake of salt. The salt is nice. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, Dane. Were you um, under the influence of anything (laughs) by any chance at the time you suggested this? I also want to know, 
if there's a specific olive oil to use. Right. Yeah. Now, was he the one who said- I mean, said, we're using only the most quality sourced ingredients right, here. Right. But maybe it tastes too much like olive oil. Right. You know, maybe you need like less olive oil and yeah. olive oil. Do we need like Kirkland Signature or Member's Mark? Yeah, right. Olive oil, Dane? Right. Do you want to try the balsamic too? I do. Now, when he first suggested right. it, was it just the olive oil that he suggested or did he suggest olive oil and balsamic? Olive oil and salt. Just that. And then okay. we went off on a tangent saying, I wonder how balsamic, because right. kind of balsamic and olive oil kind of go together in a Absolutely lot of stuff. Absolutely they do. And I've actually had people recommend balsamic and ice cream before. And that one I can totally see. Let's get the product placement right for the camera. <laughs> right. Now look at this stuff. Look at that viscosity, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. You know, I have this really great blackberry balsamic that I got from uh, Branch and Vine at the farmer's market. Shake it too hard, yeah. Uh, and that, I think, would be fantastic This is going to be like of this. a ketchup bottle disaster. <laughs> Look, but, yeah. it, but it almost looks like chocolate syrup on it this It does. Thing. It does. Hershey's Hoomst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have a non-balsamic bite once again. Okay, do it. Yeah, there is quite the uh, taste of olive yeah. in that olive oil, Kev. Yeah, I mean, the olive oil tastes amazing. I just wouldn't necessarily pair it with ice cream. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Ooh, Maybe, I got, Dane, tell us what we did wrong. <laughs> I got a really nice whiff of the, olive, of the balsamic, and it's really nice. Yeah. Now, it looks like I've got some olive oil and some balsamic on my bite. Hmm. Okay. I definitely like it better with the balsamic than I did with with the olive oil. That's pretty good. The balsamic is almost so overpowering that it tastes like balsamic ice cream with a hint of vanilla. Right, right. I think it's great, though. You know what? Next time, we should definitely try it with my blackberry balsamic because it's a sweeter balsamic. Yeah. And I think that would be incredible on this. I'm going to hit it with more balsamic and salt. Yeah. You know what? I could use a little extra salt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm asking you if you were under the influence of anything. <laughs> we're a couple of crackheads over here. <laughs> Meth, not even once. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, come on. Crackheads couldn't afford this good of balsamic. <laughs> They're too busy yeah, but somehow crack. they can afford meth. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. How do they do it? <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> I saw a meme the other day, you know, be as motivated as a meth head. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Looking for your next fix. Mm -hmm. Here we go. See, that was a lovely bite. And that was mostly balsamic and salt on my ice cream. Yeah, I have to say that... Unless we find a better olive oil to use. Yeah. I think I prefer balsamic on this ice cream. I would agree. Sorry, I would, Dane. <laughs> I would. I would break this out for a fancy dinner party. Mm-hmm. Not even make it optional. Right. Just drizzle it over the ice cream and bring it out. Oh, for sure. Oh, dang it. You probably want to say it's not chocolate syrup. Maybe. Yeah. Like, prepare. Here's the thing. I wouldn't make it optional, but I would prepare them. Yeah. Tell them know? what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like sitting down at a dinner party, having the host look at you like this, <laughs> asking them, what's in this? And they say, guess. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know. That's, that's not at all how I do mine. I'm always very upfront about it. Don't get me wrong. I'll say it in the fanciest way possible so that it sounds like I put a lot of work into it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know. No. Yeah. Rocky Mountain Oysters. <laughs> Okay, so the verdict is olive oil, eh. Olive oil needs to be re-examined, I think. I'm open to it. I'm not totally turned off by it, but I think we need different olive oil for it. Or maybe a smaller amount. And the balsamic was fun. That was a fun the little... The balsamic I really liked. Tangy, like mm -hmm. balsamic is. Right. And savory with sweet experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There we are, trying at the... <laughs> we could be at the fair eating scones... <laughs> <laughs> but no, we're doing this stuff in our little lab here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Making use of our test kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I just had an epiphany. Uh. I know what olive oil would go great on that. Mm. 
Do you know that Meyer lemon olive oil that I've got at home? Yes. That would be fantastic, especially with the blackberry balsamic. Uh-huh. Oh, that would be heaven. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Kay. I love it. We'll have Kay. to get another pint. <laughs> That's okay. We can do it. You know what? We only used half a pint for this one. Oh, great. Yeah, we'll we'll just split it up. It'll be perfect. <laughs> Hot. I love it. Yeah. All right. So let's get started here. Um, do you want to start? Oh, let's start with this. Just a fair warning. You've got less than two weeks now before the BYU-Idaho students take over Rexburg. <laughs> so raid the Walmart now, Rexburgians, Rexburgers. <laughs> Rexburgers. I like that better. Ryerepucians <laughs> and boners. We were talking about what do you call people from Bone, Idaho. Right. And Steel and Joe's Bone <laughs> actually commented. Yeah. That's that's the one piece of civilization out there other than, you know, farms and residences. Right, right. The venue. Yeah. And uh, they commented, hashtag Renob Nation for life. <laughs> and also, legendary bona fide boner tribe. <laughs> I love that. Thanks, you guys. Boner tribe. <laughs> Way to watch your... Bonafide boner tribe. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Way to watch your social media for yeah. boner references. All right. I love that. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, we ought to go up there to Steel and Joe's Bone at some point. Yeah. That'd be fun. I know the wolf works a lot with them, uh -huh. so I should just, uh, you know, hit them up. How do you get there? You take the bone road. The only one in town. <laughs> you know, my mom's favorite ride was the bone road. Yeah? It, it really, it was. <laughs> She loved to, even before the windmills were up there, she loved to take that drive. You know, you go up Lincoln, you turn right, right. Uh -huh. to where the Idaho Falls Snow Park, I think, will be again this year. Right, right. Take the Bone Road, kind of mm -hmm. curvy, right on top of the foothills east of Idaho uh -huh. Falls. Mm -hmm. I think you usually come down off 49th, don't you? Or you can keep remember. going straight to Steel and Joe's Bone. Oh, funny. You know... I actually was kind of terrified of going to Bone for a long time, because one time when I was a little kid, maybe like seven, my uncle took me in his truck up there, and we were just <laughs> driving around and stuff, and he was like, oh, no, I think I'm lost. I don't know how we're ever going to get home. <laughs> we're going to be stuck in Bone forever. There's no one around, so no one will find our bodies. Uncles are the worst. The worst, They have dude. zero <laughs> responsibility and zero so accountability. Mean. Yeah. So mean. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, and apparently there's a DoorDasher, uh -huh. like a not the brand name DoorDasher, but there's somebody who is offering to pick up your fair food from oh the fair uh -huh. in black. Send in a runner. I think they're going to be a two person operation. One waits Smart. in the car, or circles the block, or whatever. Uh -huh. They'll go in, grab your fair food, and deliver it to you. But I think they're only delivering within a ten mile radius, maybe oh. maybe a little bit more, or for a certain charge. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then it's a, also a $10 flat fee. Right. So, you know, you could get a corn dog from the fair for the price of the corn dog plus $10. And if you live in Idaho Falls, probably plus another 25 Right, right. Or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. And by then it'd be cold. So I don't know. Because half well, of the fun of eating a corn dog <clears throat> is going. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, a good piece of pizza. That's you know? fair. But I completely disagree. Okay. Because so... Every year, my dad works the fair, and every year when he does, we basically send him with a big, long list of all of the stuff that we want him to get. Because mm -hmm, he so, does sound and lights for uh, at least- For the big dog the stage. West event stage, is mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so he'll always come home with cold fair food, but it's so easy to heat up. That's what microwaves were made for, you know? Yeah. Plus, it's fair food. It's not like it's gourmet. You don't have to do anything super special and fancy to keep it nice, you yeah. know? Like, I actually think that the- Soggier, uh, like a um, bimbo dog. That's that's a good one. The soggier a bimbo dog is, the better. Okay. So I like mine crisp. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry that you have terrible taste. Just like the crust on the pickled pizza. <laughs> but especially so, and especially he'd pick up things that would be easy to sort of transport and stuff. So things like turkey legs are always a big one that we get tons of because they rock. Um, and then tiger ears, they tend to be pretty good even when they're cold. That kind of stuff. Okay. And if you have fried food and you want to warm it up, the air fryer is the way to right. go. I mean, do most people have air fryers these days? I would say so. I got a Ninja Five in One that I just love. Yeah. I mean, that's that's it. Every time I use it, it sort of raises <laughs> up in the echelon of my prized possessions. Right, I get that. Things I would grab in case of a fire. <laughs> right, right. I actually have an air fryer now too, and yeah. I didn't even like mean to get one. I yeah. got one for Christmas one year. Okay, and. 
it it's great. Like it I great. totally would recommend having one. I do steaks in there, mm-hmm. chicken oh, wines. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. honestly, ever since we did that uh, fair food taste testing, I've been thinking a lot about those fried Oreos and how I would do them. Mm-hmm. And I have a brilliant idea. All right. What I really want to do. You, you First, you suggested using mega stuffed Oreos. Yes, because it's that gooey of... center that's the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I would get mega stuffed and then blueberry pancake batter on the outside to fry them in and then pop them in the air fryer mm. so they're nice and crispy. Oh my goodness. I know. Wouldn't that be so good? Put them in a muffin tin maybe? Oh, you could do all kinds of delicious things to them. You've seen the meme, right? I'd put a stick in it. <laughs> Where if if it's true that an Oreo is based, if the physical properties of an Oreo or the order of the oh yeah things in an Oreo, like the one, <laughs> <laughs> one cookie, the outside cookie would be an O. Uh-huh. The inside filling would be the re, the re mm-hmm. and then the le- second cookie would be the O again. Right. So if you just have a stack of cookies, it'd right. be O. And <laughs> right. if, if you just had a stack of frosting, it would be re, 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 re. Right. <laughs> and you're just saying they need more re, 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 re. <laughs> they need more re, 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 Yeah. They need at least or re, 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 re O's, yeah. in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Mega stuffed. You may have seen last week that uh, an 18-year-old was arrested for shooting a shotgun in McDonald's parking lot in Ammon. Now remember, I did not see that. We so we drove by on a late on a Friday or Saturday night this right. summer, and we saw all these kids, a horde, I in, would say, a horde of kids, <laughs> yeah, in trucks and cars, mm-hmm. just parked basically in between Albertsons on hit. Mm-hmm. And McDonald's on hit. Yeah, basically tailgating without the food. There were some that were sitting in a truck bed on lawn chairs. Right. Which that was really funny. So I thought this was interesting because when I was on the cruise, uh-huh. on the cruise in the uh, 80s, uh-huh. the cruise was the Northgate Mile yeah. area. Mm-hmm. There was a country club mall there. Right. And... I remember a parent saying to me, oh, well, back when I was a kid in the 60s, generationally speaking now, Mm -hmm. um, the cruise was on 1st Street. Yeah, I could see that. So the cruise moved from 1st Street to Northgate Mile Mm -hmm. in the 90s, I believe it was 17th. I would say so, yeah. All the kids cruised up and down to see and be seen. Right, right. To see and be see. Yeah. Is the acronym I like to use for it, even though that makes absolutely no sense. (laughs) Um, And now it appears as if the new hangout spot is between Albertsons Mm -hmm. and McDonald's in that parking lot. Right. Now, that being said, I'll also say that I definitely see some teens cruising on Sunnyside, too. Okay. And I've seen some. And some racing over there. Doing like a little car show, an impromptu Uh car show in the Winco parking lot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Although I think that's like a club. Okay. Maybe so. Yeah. All right. A little less impromptu than it looks. I thought kids were all just Snapchatting each other these days and that was it. But, and, and I think for a good 10 years, it may have been that way. Mm-hmm. But it's, is it cool to see the kids getting back together? I mean, I, I wonder if COVID kind of made people want some more face to face, you know? Maybe. Like they, they were so sick of always being only online, especially when like they were also only seeing people from school online. It was probably nice to finally see people in person. So our plan was to have a little uh, interview sesh right. with the kid. In fact, we drove by there late last Saturday night, mm-hmm. meant to, didn't. Yeah. We and were, now it's back to school. Yeah, we just wanted some Mickey D's. We, yeah. we were in our sloppy clothes and didn't feel like yeah, no. talking to people. <laughs> and now I'm kind of glad because if they're carrying shotguns, what the hell? Yeah, what the heck, dude? I I asked somebody about it and she said, because she posted on Facebook, I'm always mm-hmm. scared to go there. So I, I, I asked her and said, I, I don't want to give away who she is, but we're mm-hmm. good enough friends for me to message her. And she said, so there's always big groups of teenagers there in the parking lot, revving their engines at each other, arguing with each other, and the behavior inside the stores all over the place. They have no manners or respect for anybody. Wow. I don't know if you saw the viral video a couple years ago of an all-out brawl that happened in the Emmon McDonald's. Okay, so we're, are we latecomers here to this information? Wow, I guess we are. I've tried driving through the parking lot, and really, they're just standing in the middle of the parking lot in massive groups, skateboarding and sitting all over each other's trucks like it's greased lightning. <laughs> Super aggressive with each other and with complete strangers. Honestly, uh, I've gone there. There's been rival gangs of kids just daring each other to do something. Okay. What? I'm sorry. I just want to point out. 
<laughs> I love that. Go grease lightning, you're burning up the quarter I know. mile. I love grease that. Lightning, go <laughs> grease I love that her example of hoodlums is grease lightning. <laughs> she may have watched. Why is Grease the one Mormon approved movie? <laughs> No, the no Princess Bride it's, is the other one. Oh, okay. There's two. <laughs> well, but I just don't understand why Grease is in there because yeah, right? you know it ain't no bragging. She's a real <laughs> wagon. Yeah, right. Doesn't exactly <laughs> seem like. Well, I think it's that um, one of the characters has to deal with the consequences of premarital sex and is shamed for it. That's true. That seems like it's right Ross, up their alley. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. There are worse things I could do. And frankly, we all know that Mormons love a good musical. <laughs> Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I've just been fascinated <laughs> why that gets a pass. <laughs> right. Right. Also, John Travolta in that is just so handsome. So you I know? think <laughs> it, even though this is the wrong time of year to do it, I think we need to dig deeper. So we're either going to table it for the year. Yeah. For the season. And we'll get back to you probably next June. <laughs> uh, or, you know, if we, if we happen to stop by and I guess we're feeling brave. Right. We'll uh, we'll let you know exactly what's going on there. Yeah. You might be thinking about quantities of beef for the holidays or to feed your family throughout the winter. Right now, Virgin River Land and Cattle Company is offering these amazing 25-pound butcher boxes with steaks, roasts, and ground beef. Experience locally raised beef fed on green Idaho pastures for a rich beef flavor. Find Virgin River Land and Cattle Company on Facebook and use promo code IFAF to save 15% on that butcher box full of locally raised beef. Back to school means thrifting at Elsie's Closet, upscale resale. It's trendy fashion that's budget friendly. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. Right now they have everything for back to school. Pants, tees, sneakers, bags, jewelry. Look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street in Idaho Falls. Use promo code IFAF to save 15% off your total purchase at Elsie's Closet. It's not just a stop at the thrift, it's a whole vibe. Looking for help with your upcoming wedding or event? You don't have to do it all on your own. DIY Weddings and Event Rentals has great ideas for your next wedding or event, like the Polaroid guest book, candy salad jars, even a full-service drink trailer. And everything you need, like backdrops, signs, dinnerware, and decorations. Call or text 208-403-2040 today. That's 208-403-2040. Use promo code IFAF to save 15% off all your rentals. Selling your home? Make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. I help Idaho buy, sell, and invest in real estate. And I'm joined by Carly Morgan to help you even more. You trust us to tell like it is on this show, and we do the same with your real estate transaction. And we're backed and brokered by the best. Keller Williams Realty, East Idaho. So make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. Link in post. Did your family or friends love their visit to Idaho Falls this summer? Send them the best souvenir, a unique homegrown tea from Teton t-shirts. Including these cool reimagined retro images of the Water Tower, the West Bank, and now the Civic Auditorium. Check out tetontshirts.com. Type that right into the URL window or click the link on this post. tetontshirts.com. Proudly wear a real piece of Idaho Falls. So last week, there was what I believe to be an example of misguided energy. Oh, yeah? How so? Based on good intentions. Well, let's start with this post here. Somebody posted that they had been in Ross Dress for Less, and it was just a mess. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, uh, It was kind of sad. It was sad to see. Right, right. But then, for whatever reason, the Idaho Falls Chamber of Commerce, or at least somebody on it, not going to name names, But they posted like, a, hey, I went into the store and um, I spent 10 minutes putting things away and you should too. And and they made kind of a big deal, you know, share this post. And they're not even a member of the Idaho Falls Chamber of Commerce, but we're helping them out anyway because our mission is to help businesses. What? Right. That seems. I'm so confused by this. I mean, okay, there is a part of me that gets it. 
Because, like, you know, if I'm ever taking out my niece and nephew somewhere and they pick something up and try to put it back somewhere it doesn't go, I'm like, absolutely not. Put that back where you found it, not where you want to put it. That's rude. Right. Don't do that to people. Yeah. When you see something, you know, some frozen meat sitting in the cereal aisle. Right. Right. That kind of stuff drives me absolutely nuts as someone who who worked in retail, (laughs) especially because it's not that hard. You're five feet away. It's so easy to just put it back where you found it. You, you did know? work in retail, so how would you feel if complete strangers came into the store with no intent to buy, but to put things back where they think it goes? Yeah, that would drive me even more nuts. I mean, I guess it's great that their heart's in the right place, and also, absolutely, no, like Heart's in the right place. The thing is, chances are they're ju- we're just going to have to go back after you and redo it anyway. So I guess the story was all the employees were up front helping people check out. Right. And there was nobody, you know, minding the store, so to speak. And let's be honest here. There was probably someone who was either letting their kids run amok or who was just being a douchebag who doesn't know how to clean up after themselves. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. People are the worst. Yeah. People are the worst. (laughs) I agree. Yeah. I mean, realistically, there's no reason that the store should have ever gotten into that condition, even with all the employees up front. Uh Aha. And let's talk about why I think this is misguided energy. Mm Mm-hmm. Ross Dress for Less is not Ross Park. Right. It doesn't it if Ross Park needed cleaned up. Right. And I understand even in certain extenuating circumstances, mm-hmm. speaking of Ross Park, when their pipe burst. Right. The second to the last weekend before they closed for the summer. Mm-hmm. Absolutely they could use some help. Yeah. Uh when Reed's dairy burns down. Yes. Absolutely they could use some help. Right. Ross is a multi-billion dollar company. Yes. And apparently the store here in Idaho Falls is being poorly run. Well, and not only that. This isn't, when you when you put on your Superman cape and rush to save them from their own quagmire, mm-hmm. they're a business. They're not a charity. Yes. And not only that, it might not even be the locals who are poorly running the place. It's probably corporate. Yeah. You know, it says it's you can have X amount saying, of hours exactly. for this You can store. have this many employees, you can have this many hours, and that's it. And yeah. they recognize that they need that manpower up front and that the store can get messy and it's going to be okay because they can clean it later. Now, nothing you know? against the Chamber of Commerce. I'm not necessarily calling them out. Oh, I'm, no. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just describing them. Well, and, and also, as someone who worked in a retail business where corporate did mandate what hours we could Mm -hmm. have having solid examples like that saying hey this is how our store looks on days when you only allow us to have this many employees we need more that is such a handy tool it's so much more helpful to take that solid evidence to corporate and explain to them why you need more so that you can pay your employees more rather than you know, not being able to have that because someone came in and cleaned it up. Well, and I think with all the people sharing the post and everything. Right. That it, um, it more served to shame Ross dress for less. Yeah. Which I would say is a good thing. I mean, kind of, if you're, you know, corporate, right. Yeah. If you're running your business so poorly that it's difficult to navigate the aisles because Mm -hmm. shit's thrown around everywhere. Right. It looks like a tornadoes, a tortado zone. (laughs) You know, that's that's your problem. Right. Business. Mm-hmm. Business owner. I don't mean to say I don't have any sympathy for them. No. I don't think any store should be overrun by hooligans. No, of course not. But kind of your problem to fix. Right. Well, and this is an opportunity Isn't for it? job creation, too. You know, because there's this, you know, egg on their face where they look stupid because they didn't have enough employees. Now they might go to that manager and say, okay, finally, you can, you can hire a couple more folks. Yeah. You know, versus if volunteers go in and help out this multi-billion dollar company and then people who are looking for jobs can't get jobs. The uh, the thing jumped the shark, though, when somebody created a help clean up Ross Dress for Less event <laughs> for last Saturday, this past Saturday. Right. I was I, I just my eyes rolled so far in the back of my <laughs> head that I couldn't see. Yeah. Um, and then my buddy Brad pointed out, who has, I guess, more awareness than I do. Total joke. Right. The account was created that day. Okay, yeah. Fake name. Mm-hmm. But the guy created the event as a joke. So Brad asked ChatGPT to write a sort of, we are the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Type song. Uh-huh. <laughs> Here are the lyrics. In the aisles where the deals are gold, there's a story that's too often told. A bargain hunter's dream, but at what cost? When we leave a mess, we know what's lost. 
Clothes on the floor, shoes tossed aside, empty hangers where the deals reside. We've got to change. We've got to care. Let's leave the store in a way that's fair. Clean up the racks. Pick up the stacks. Leave Ross shining bright and never look back. Jeez oh, Louise. Why am I doing this? I got a microphone right here. Uh, yeah, why are you doing that? I have this, too. <laughs> Double microphone? It's more than a store. It's a place we all share. Mm. Uh, let's treat it with love. Show that we care. Brilliant, buddy. Mm. Just brilliant. Good stuff. Yeah, maybe we need to get... <laughs> Who are the people that did We Are the World? I don't even know. <laughs> Artists for USA for Africa or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Idahoans for Ross. <laughs> there we go. But seriously, come on. I uh, I just want to put a nice tidy bow on this and say billion dollar companies do not deserve our free labor. charity. They yeah. don't deserve free labor. What are we teaching them? Right. If we come on. Yeah. I think it's time to break out this meme that I saw just recently. Mm -hmm. I'll read it to you, or you can screenshot it here on YouTube. It says, silence, brand. I am a living being with a divine intellect and an immortal soul. You are a soulless mega corporation attempting to infiltrate my psyche by pretending to be human on social media. I do not want your products. I do not want your services. Do not speak to me. <laughs> Honestly, I love that. You know, that's a little of out me... of context because that's for you know brands like I don't know Wendy's, right, right, trying to be human on social media, right. Yeah, I will say it does kind of give me Hans Christian Andersen Little Mermaid vibes. Uh -huh. Yeah, it definitely speaks to my um, you know, my literary soul. Yes, it's very nice by humanity there. What yeah. is what is the um? I am the captain of my fate. I am the master of my soul. Which one is that? Oh gosh, Invictus. Yes, That's there the we one. go. Yeah. All right. Now here's something you can help with if you live in Idaho Falls. And this is a show mostly about Idaho Falls. Right. When we're not hanging out at the fair in Blackfoot. Yeah. <laughs> or eating curry pizza in Rexburg. Well, you know, there is the and friends part of it. Or Lil Mike's Barbecue <laughs> in um, Rigby or <laughs> Big Judson and Archer or F -f King Tasty. Or Steel and Jones and Bone. <laughs> yeah. With the Pocatone. other boners. <laughs> okay. This... <laughs> Is a photo from today at our high school, says this post. This is Idaho Falls High School. Mm -hmm. The floor on the second story above is literally caving in and collapsing the ceiling of the first floor. This is why we need a new school. This is about the kids and providing a decent space for them to learn. Dear old IF High. What a right. bummer. The gym floor continues to cave in as well, and our community will not pass a bond to allow funds for a new school? Next time the bond comes up for vote, please vote yes. This is a travesty, and the community needs to understand what is happening within the walls of IFHS. Right. Well, Amen, sister. Well, and I will say, like, the IF high school kids have, have deserved a new school for a long, long time. We've gotten so many other ones, so many other places around the area, and mm -hmm. yet not right there in the heart of Idaho Falls. What, are we up in the hood? Yeah. And I guess Skyline isn't much better. Yeah, Skyline's also kind of falling apart. I was really hoping, since I, uh, full disclosure, am a graduate of Idaho Falls High School. What's up? <laughs> Go Tigers. Um, but yeah, going around to Thunder Ridge. Uh, yeah. Hillcrest, even. Even Rigby High School is really oh, nice. Oh, man, it's great. Yeah. I delivered, I don't know, something there. Oh, mm -hmm. I went to Judge the Thing last fall. That's right. like probably going to come up on that again. Uh-huh. The drama competition or something. Yeah. I will say, though, I didn't really love the glass walls. I thought that was a poor design choice in America. <laughs> Anywhere else, I think it'd be great. What are you saying, Carly? <laughs> I think we all know what I'm saying here. Keeping in mind that <laughs> Facebook and YouTube will nerf us if we talk about social issues too much. <laughs> right. What exactly are you saying, Carly? <laughs> well, you know, especially since there was almost one... In that area, but okay. All right. We'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I would love to see. I thought that they were going to move Idaho Falls High School or build a new one at the corner of 49th and Holmes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that they planned to. It would have been a great place, a great plot of land. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we can do about that, IFers and IFAFers. Yeah. Well, and it's about time. Yeah, it is. Something we do on the show, which is tradition- I mean, considering this is only our second summer right. <laughs> doing the show, and we're doing it again, is the Song of the Summer 2024. Mm -hmm. 
kind of a leftover from my days in radio. Right, right. I still listen to top 40 music. Oh, how can you not? It's fun. Typically Keeps males. Fresh. <laughs> yeah. They stop consuming new music around 35, 38. Oh, wow. Somewhere in there. So here you are defying the statistics. That's a- hot. Well, ask any male <laughs> over the age of 40, what do you think of today's pop music? Oh, right. They're always going to say it's crap. 99 out of 100, I think, will say, mm-hmm. that's bullshit. Yeah, right. We bring back Motley Crue or something. Um <laughs> But I still love pop music, and it's a great time for pop music. Right. Uh, another plug for my buddy Brad, now 105.1. They play only new music, so you can get familiar really quick. Mm-hmm. Um, just a bunch of great stuff on the radio right now. Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, she's so good. Selena. I mean, I will say some of her stuff makes me feel like I'm in high school again, which I don't mm-hmm. love because tra- trauma, <laughs> you know, but... Taking off this dress, kicking off my shoes, because I'll be single soon. All right. So Sean Ross, my buddy Sean Ross from the Radio Days, from RadioInsight.com, mm-hmm. has declared as the summer song of 2024, Shaboozy, a bar song, Tipsy. Which, how interesting is it that it's country pop? <laughs> Yeah. Country pop is making a huge comeback. And I've even noticed a really big trend in like cowboy aesthetics Uh around here. I I mean, just in general, around this generation. Just recently have purchased cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. I have. You're fully committed to your moonlighting gig over there at 96 1 and 102 on the Wolf. Well, you know, I know I'm not always the part internally, so I at least want to look the part externally. (laughs) (laughs) You know, especially because I'm kind of posh. Like, I can't can't go camping. I can't pee in the woods. So I at least need to look the part. (laughs) You. You really look great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We, you I'm wore definitely... your boots to the fair food tasting, mm-hmm. judging boots. thing we did this week. I always get compliments on them every time I wear them, at least one each day. And I yeah, love that. They're gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Actually, they'd look really good with this dress. I should wear, wear it with this Yes. Time. Yes, they would. Yeah. Shabuzi, a bar song, which we've already mentioned and we've already mentioned on this show mm-hmm. that um, the country crossover stuff is really big right now. Yeah. So if you want to be on the bleeding edge of pop culture, it's this show. And I know we're a con I'm discovering more and more. We're a content farm for the other major media outlets in town. We talk about earwigs. They talk about earwigs. We, you know, we talk about a business. They talk about a business. It's just, it's ridiculous, but you'll always hear it here first Mm -hmm. folks. Uh, Exhale resort and spa at 1421 first street in Idaho falls. Now open. I know. I'm so excited. Now, you might think, hasn't Exhale been around for a minute? And they have, but they just opened. their resort, baby. Their resort. Yeah. I'm so excited. Apparently, they've got pools and pickleball, and I think hot tubs, too. And bungalows. Yeah. So you can stay the night. Their bungalows look so cute and good, and I'm so excited. I can't wait to stay there. Yeah, same. Now, we've been a couple of times for the little package. Uh, Which is also so nice, and I think a pretty dang good deal for what you're getting. Yeah. Massage, facial, soak, manicure, pedicure. Yeah. And that's for two people for what? Under 400? Uh, It's somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. Which I think is pretty darn good. Depending on if you get... I think you can get like a... 45 minute massage or yeah, 80 you, minute massage. Yeah, you can massage. go a little more ham or a little less ham. Exactly. We go directly in the middle amount of ham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We like yeah. medium amounts of ham. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the uh, resort is now open to adults only. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we here's the list. Seven cabins for an overnight stay, hot pools, waterfalls, fire pits, pickleball, cornhole, <laughs> seating areas for couples to... Oh, seating areas. You have benches, do you? Wow. <laughs> anyway, it sounds really great. And so sassy. <laughs> it's, well, it's nice to have another staycation place yeah. other than Destinations Inn. It totally is. I completely agree. Or one of the local hotel's hot tub suites. Yeah. I kind of wonder if you um, like rent a room, if you maybe get a discount on some of their other um, uh, services. I wonder. I think I that'd be there's kind like of a nice deal. Package deals. One would think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause that would be really great. Like if you could just like plan your day so that you spend the entire morning at the, like inside of the spa and then your evening in the bungalows. Get some pizza delivered. <sighs> watch some Netflix. Some pickle pizza. Chill. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Who in Idaho Falls wants to do the pickle pizza? Oh, anyone, please. <laughs> I'll be your first customer. So Exhale I'll Spa. Get so fat. <laughs> used to be Exhale Day Spa and Salon. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, Exhale Resort and Spa. You are IFAF this week. Crisp High Five. Whoosh, 21 Finger Gun pew, Salute. Pew. And Chef's Kiss. 
to you. And one your of my favorite places in town. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever heard the phrase rabbit, rabbit, rabbit? Like yes. Three rabbits? I thought it was just rabbit, rabbit. Oh, maybe it's only two. Yeah. You're supposed to say that on the first day of the yeah. month. Mm hmm. And since it's September already. I know. How crazy is that? This year has flown by. It has. I saw a meme earlier that was like, here was the year. <laughs> January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Right, right. <laughs> it's so true. Boom. <laughs> here we are, September. Mm -hmm. um, since, since it is September, we do have details on spud days. Which is probably like the bane of any like a farmer's kids existence. Because not only do they have to go to school longer, they also have to work during that break. Well, I think that they, <laughs> I think, I think the thinking is we do a two week spud harvest and mm -hmm. then we celebrate. Once the right. harvest is done, then y'all can celebrate. That's true. That's fair. So it's happening basically Friday, September 20th and Saturday, September 21st. Super fun. There's like a chalk walk and a couple of other things, I think, the weekend before. Oh, that sounds like a blast. It sounds cool. You want to know but the, something? But the main events are on Friday the 20th and Saturday the 21st. Oh, nice. Parade and stuff like that. Right, the good stuff. Mm -hmm. You want to know something? I don't think I've ever been to Spud Days. I haven't either. Do you want to change that this year? Let's see if we can. Let's try. I think it's that's too be far fun. out for me to commit. That's three weeks. <laughs> right. I might have a thing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's there's gonna be a chalk walk, live music, French fry eating contest, lip Ooh, sync I could contest. Win that. Yes, yes, you could. <laughs> Between you and Rango. Oh, I love yeah, some Frenchy French for my <laughs> Frenchy guy. <laughs> a street <laughs> festival. <laughs> and lest we forget to cap off the uh the Spud Days, the very last event, I think it's at three or four on Saturday the the twenty first. Mm -hmm. The Spud Tug. Oh, fun. Yeah. Big old tug of war. Yeah, I think so. How is the. I just like how is, Spud Tug. <laughs> how is the finishing event not a potato sack race, though? Oh, uh, yeah. I bet you they have one of those. They have to, but how is that not like the final, like the finale? Has anybody done the Marilyn Monroe potato sack dress thing for I an mean, outfit for this? Yeah, that'd be cool. We talked about Teton t shirts earlier. If mm -hmm. you're looking for something to wear, check out this design. Yeah, I love this one, by the way. It is modeled. Almost exactly mm -hmm. after the original dress, potato sack dress worn by Marilyn Monroe. Super cute. You can get it at tetontshirts.com, link in post. And while we're on t-shirts, I got to give a shout out to my buddy Greg with two Gs. Greg Hale, what's up? He, like me, mm -hmm. I don't know how we found each other, kindred <laughs> souls. I know, right? In that we like to just make our own t-shirts. Yeah, you love your fun little local tees. Just one-offs. <laughs> yeah. This one, he's like, hey, uh, you got any designs in mind? I'm like, yes, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I do. Remember when we ate the 27-year-old beef jerky? Oh, yeah. Of course I do. The jerky stuff mm -hmm. from, that's even what we named the episode, <laughs> from King Bee Beef Jerky, now mm -hmm. Hero Meat Snacks, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he he did this vintage artwork for me. I love that. It looks great too. And then what does that sticker football say? Pl football player trading card inside. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Honestly, that's that's, that's on the that's reference neat. art that we used. Yeah, I sent him a picture of the jerky cans. Gosh, I love that. That's so <laughs> cool, though. Thanks, Greg. You're awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. No, you're awesome. <laughs> now I gotta know if we ordered our Marilyn Monroe potato sack teas today, we would probably get them in time for. Yes. Bud week, right? It takes a painfully long amount of time. We use Teespring and they take two weeks. Okay. So get it now. Right. And you'll definitely have it for Spud Days. Maybe not the Chalk Walk. Right. But definitely but you know what? I think days. I'm going to get me one. That way we can all match when we get there. That'll be fun. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. We've been to a couple of weddings this year. We have. We have. I'm a little surprised that there haven't been more because it is wedding season after Are you all. That's a record for me. Two? I'll, no, I'll go three, four years without even going to a wedding. Okay, And I went enough. to two this summer. All right, all one, right. One was my son, mm -hmm. and one was your coworker. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah both so, beautiful weddings, by the way. Beautiful. Yeah, really well, well done. Well done. Yeah. No notes. Mm-hmm. Except... Well, here's the thing. It's not really any notes for the actual <laughs> wedding. No. But weirdly enough, both times we've been to a wedding this season, there's been someone who's not the bride wearing white. And I don't get that, dude. <laughs> What happened? Did we miss something? Is Okay, is it kind of like how now you can wear black to a wedding and it's okay? I like, did... is suddenly wearing white to a wedding okay? Because I don't think so. Yeah, I Googled <laughs> it, and um, 
because, okay, all I had that fit me was black. Right. And so I Googled it. Is it okay to wear black to a wedding? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it used to be reserved. All black used to be reserved for funerals. Right. Whereas now it's acceptable at weddings and sometimes even encouraged. Yeah. Depending on the color scheme. Yeah. And I saw a couple other dudes there. All black. Right. Well, and her color scheme was like black and sage green. Yeah. So it was perfect. Great colors, good. by the way. Yeah. I know. It looked really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. And I feel like men have always gotten a pass on black because if you only have one suit, it's probably going to be black. Yeah. I thought that the reason you didn't wear white to a wedding is that... The bride wears white and you don't want to upstage her. Well, at the very least, you want to give like you want to give her as much opportunity to shine as possible. Yes. Yeah. So it's not here's the thing. The gal at this last one was wearing like a knee length white lace. It was more of an ivory lace dress. But again, that's also one that you can't you can't get away with. Like I don't wear it's anything. Too close. I don't I don't even wear pastels that are too pale. You know? Gotcha. Like, you you can't even hint at wearing white. Like, I wouldn't even wear too pale of a blush, you know, for the risk of it looking white, especially because I'm super pasty. You know? And I <laughs> right. feel like I'm already glowing, you know, glow stick style. I don't need any extra help with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just kind of baffled. And the bride was, too. And she was like, I don't really get it either. We did have a great time uh, at the wedding. Oh, yeah. It was super fun. Barn on First Street. Yes. Which I actually. Great venue, guys. Yeah. I've never gotten to go in there. And it's it's fantastic. It's really well made. Uh, They completely redid the entire interior of it, which was super nice. Uh, The bathrooms were. Top notch, which I always appreciate, because I'm not gonna I'm not going to no porta potty, especially not in my nice clothes. They've got so the they've got the barn sort of split into a main floor, and then the upstairs, and the mm-hmm. upstairs you can see the the whole arch. It goes all the way up to the uh-huh. arch, and it's a made capacity 135 people. Yeah, something like that. So if you're looking for another event venue, I love that we're getting these event venues now. Barn on First Street, right. Brickyard Event Center. Mm-hmm. One thing I think that guys don't get about weddings, though, is that you cannot and should not, if you are a good moral person, smash the cake into your new bride's face. (laughs) Now, that did happen at this wedding, and thankfully, it was totally cool and not a problem. And, you know, they understand each other well enough to know where their boundaries are. When I got married, (laughs) I told my now (laughs) ex-husband that if he smashed that cake in my face, we would be getting a divorce before we even put our license in. (laughs) So... There's that. Uh, but here's I think the that's thing. called an annulment. Well, yeah, at that point. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, you just tear it up and nothing ever happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, basically, the way I look at it is men don't understand how much effort goes into looking good day of. And if, oh, okay, for example, I know for a fact that this bride and myself had a makeup trial run and the actual day of makeup done by a professional, which costs a pretty penny. Right. At least three figures, mm-hmm. you know? And so you have, you spent all of this time and money getting that done just for your pictures, you know? And then on top of that, there's the dress, which can be thousands of dollars depending on, you know, where you go. I know, um, the average back when I was working at Treasures was about a thousand. When you do that cake smash, you're not only messing up her makeup, you could also mess up her dress. Yeah. And that could be a family keepsake that could go down generations. I get it. I agree with you. And sometimes dudes, we talked about the call of the void last episode. <sighs> some some men just want to be in the doghouse. <laughs> sometimes those intrusive thoughts win. Oh, it's just it's not uncommon to have the hijinks of the husband <laughs> interfere with the peace and calm and composure of the wife. Sure. I mean, any episode of The Simpsons. Right. Any episode of Family Guy. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, here's the thing, though. I really think that the tradition should be that the wife smashes it in her husband's face. You know, honestly, because the dude could clean up way faster. Way faster, way easier. Okay. Yeah. I, I agree. And frankly, I kind of think it's funnier. You know, because yeah. usually it is the guy who's doing yeah. all kinds of wacky stuff. So Carly tried to get me to dance, but it was a line dance. Yeah. The Cupid Shuffle. Yeah. Which I feel every white person knows inherently in their soul. Uh-huh. Apparently not. But I will say. I don't know the directions. <laughs> I get confused playing Twister. The nice thing is that they sing the directions, Mike. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, how, you know, everybody's doing it with such style and I would just be like. Right. 
Go to the left. Uh, oh, I mean, right. Oh, yeah. what? I mean, right. back forward, you know? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But Now I that was... you've got <laughs> cowboy boots, are we going to go line dancing? I think we might have to. <laughs> I mean, I've got the hat. I've got the boots. Oh. Let's get gussied up and go. Now I just need a big old belt buckle. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh, we could get you a bolo tie. Blink twice if you need help. <laughs> It'd be cute. Stop okay. it. <laughs> All right. So anyway. We're going to close out the show with Carly doing a little line dancing. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you look judge. great. Just fantastic. It's, it's been so long since I've done that. But, you know, it's like the call of the whiteies. Uh-huh. You know, as soon as the music comes on, you got to run over and just <laughs> give it a little grooving. <laughs> That's our show. See you next Monday when the fair's done. Subscribe on YouTube. Link in post. Stay fresh, cheese bags.